Oh, you dirty, rotten bolt! Bolt! How could you break off? You dirty, rotten mother! Oh, dirty, rotten! How dare you break? Oh, I can't believe it broke off! Not again! Oh, man alive! Son of a... Oh, I can't believe it broke off! Jesus! No wonder I'm the disgruntled mechanic! Happy New Year! My first video of 2016 and I'm opening it up with the with an overbite India Pale Ale. This is actually for one of my one of the other mechanic guys that I know that uh, told me that my other beer didn't meet his standards so hope this does. Hiya folks, it's your favorite 98 percenter on YouTube, Mike the Disgruntled Mechanic. Hope I have a good 2016, hope you all do, hope you all had a happy new year. So today, what I'm up to is my 2011 Chevy Volt needs an alignment. And no, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to take that somewhere to get it done. Never did an alignment, I'm not going to do it. Like, uh, you know, you, I know you can do it, I guess, by yourself or with, you know, tools and trigonometry and some other stuff, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll pay the money. But what I did do was I rotated the tires, so, of course, that changed all your TPMS around, <clears throat> so now they'll be in a different place. And what I'm going to attempt to do is um, I have a TS-401 on order um, just because I sort of think I need one. But you can do this and relearn the TPMS by actually um, a procedure that's in the manual that says you need to tool but normally you don't. I've done it before without it. We'll try it again. Um, knowing my luck, this time it won't work correctly or do it right. But we'll give it a shot. The volt's a little bit different um, than some of the other ones. The, the, the principle's basically the same the way you go around but the way you make it start the procedure can be different between vehicles so the volts a little different we'll go into that and while I'm showing you that I'll show you um, another video I'll be making because uh, well I'll just show you and we'll talk about it so let's get started here's the project I'll be doing and making a video of uh, most mirrors are easy this one's a little more complicated than some that I've done you gotta rip the interior panel off uh, to get to it. This is a son of a gun even to change the turn signal which is around which is around the back there. You gotta rip the whole mirror apart but uh, we're gonna order a whole new mirror and put it on because I'm not going to pay to have the body work done from what happened. I'm not too sure how well you can see it but there are crinkles in it. And back here on this one you can see that crinkle there and that dent. Uh, yes I had a deer hit my car which is uh, I think the third time this year I've had deer hit vehicles I think it may be because this Volt is so dang quiet that they don't hear you coming and uh, this one just ran right in the side two ran in front of me I have a dash cam video of it but I'm not gonna post it because I just don't I don't like to watch that kind of stuff so I'm not gonna post it <clears throat> so anyhow that's gonna be the next project replacing this mirror and to do that we'll have to take the interior panel off which it all looks very interesting so that'll be another project but for today we're gonna to work on these tire pressure monitoring sensors and resetting those what I wanted to show was uh, when you start the volt to actually take off with it what you have to do is you have to push the brake in and you hit the power button over here and then it winds up and it gets ready to go into drive mode or it is in drive mode so I'm going to shut it down. But one of the things that this has is it has a uh, diagnostic mode that you can just, it's sort of like an accessory mode or whatever, but they, it's a diagnostic mode. And if you just don't press on the brake and you hold the power button in and continue to hold it, I'm still holding it, it'll go into this diagnostic mode. So that's what we're in right now. <clears throat> What I was doing, I was in here with my Autel Moxie DOS, seeing if there was anything that I could do um, with this Volt as far as the TPMS. And um, 
Sorry about the beeping. Not much I can do about it. Uh, we found the volt. Yes. But as far as I can see, there is nothing that it does for the TPMS. Not through the OBD2. Now, the odd thing about this, too, let's go to control units. Now, what I figured is it would be under body control module. Ah, sorry about that. Hit the parking brake. I don't know this thing's so sensitive today. Alright, we escaped. Now there's the body control module. And when we go in there, I didn't see anything that looked familiar. I will walk you through what's in here because there is a plethora of things you can do. But tire pressure monitoring sensor isn't one of them. If anybody knows where it is and how I can find it, please let me know. That would be great. But if I go into control functions, uh, let's. I'm pretty sure I went into chassis control. Um, I'm sure it's none of those, but uh, all right, brake transmission shift interlock. So, no, we don't want that. Um, so, we got uh, theft deterrent, exterior, interior lighting, keyless entry, vehicle access, windows, wipers. It's not in there. Now, I've also scrolled through these other ones body control module, um, inflatable restraint, passenger presence module, instrument cluster. It wasn't in there, radio, digital. Uh, tele, uh, telecommatics, communication, well, I wonder what that is. Let's look at that real quick. I don't think I did try that one, but we'll see what it is. Maybe that's what it is, I don't know. But it has for the mobile phone and all that. The other thing about this Volt that is unique is, uh, let's go to control functions. Yeah, green indicator, phone call test, red indicator. No, we don't need any of that. The other thing that is unique about this Volt is it actually has two OBD2 ports. And uh, as you can see here, keyless entry, battery charger, park assist, steering column control, hybrid power. I know I get myself in a lot of trouble pushing on some of these, but I don't see any of it in there. What I was saying about this, what's unique about it is it actually has two OBD2 ports. Um, the other one works differently. Now, I plugged my OBD2 in it, and I couldn't get it to recognize it. So I don't know if you need a special adapter or what. I haven't got that far. But the other one is actually right back here and under here on the passenger side. Um, like I said, the OBD2 fit on it, but it won't communicate with it, so I don't know what else you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut this off, and I'm going to show you the procedure that I am going to do to try and do this tire pressure monitor sensor manually and we'll see if it works. Now what you have to do with the car, put the brake on, I'm going to start it. And if you see down here, you can scroll down the bottom, see how they're changing colors there. Well if you go back, what you want to do, that's your you know oil and information, you want to go to that one for your tires. Now over here on this side is your select button. And what you have to do is just push it and hold your select button. And, and as you do that, it's going to come up and it's going to ask you, do you want, are you sure you want to relearn? And you tell it yes. So then from there, the process is, uh, what I do is I relieve air out of the left front, the right front, the right rear and the left rear and you have to do it in that order and it should relearn them to each tire what you do is you'll get an audio beep each time um, it actually finds it and does it and then you go to the next one until you're done now you'll get a double beep and you can turn it off and you should be done um, I'm getting the TS 401 to do that because I think it'll be a little easier what I do is <clears throat> and I'm gonna do that now and then I'll get back after I do that is because sometimes you got to take a pretty good chunk of air out of them. So what I do is I over inflate them to 50, 55 pounds, and it's usually like a 10 pound pressure drop, but you just relieve the pressure out of them, it'll beep and you go around. So what I'm going to do is uh, put the air in, set the camera up, when I get all of it set up, I'll be back. What I'm going to do now is go in and, show, and do what I showed you. I'm going to put it in the mode the way that I showed you. Then I'm going to run around here like a nut probably trip over something in my garage, fall on my face, 
and hopefully get all the tires done. What I use to, to leave the air out is I just use the air chuck uh, off there and press it in to get the air out and that's the way we do it. So <clears throat> let me go in and set that and do that quick and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm going to go over here and turn my light off first and then we'll start. Okay, I'm getting in to fire up and start the process. Pushing the select button. Are you sure you want to do the relearn? Turn the knob. Put it to the there we are. Sound like the Roadrunner. Okay, here we go, left front. There it was. It took a while, as you see, especially sometimes for the worst one. Our first one. Over the right, right front. There's right front, right rear. Left rear. tire being done, then the double beat, that the whole process was done. So we'll shut it off. <clears throat> now, it doesn't like it when the keys are left in it. It's telling you to close the door and the keys are still in it. Okay, so there's the process. Now what I do next is I go around and with the regular tire gauge, put air in, make sure all the tires have about the same pressure in 40 or so then I'll pick a random tire um, probably right rear I'll go back and leave air out of that and um, well first after I put like 40 in all of them I'll check the pressure in the right rear on my DIC um, on the driver's information center and then uh, I'll go back and leave some air out of that and see if that's the one that goes down usually that's a pretty good indicator you can do it with more than one but I'm usually pretty pretty good with that. So I'm gonna put air in all these tires. I'll take you back inside to the driver's uh, information center, show you that all of them are hopefully measuring about the same. I'm gonna do it with a gauge and they should be. Claws are close. 
and then I'll probably go back to the right rear and we'll let air out of that and make sure it's telling us it's the right rear. So I'm just going to put air in the tires right now and then I'll be back. Here we are back inside the car. Let's start the car. Push the button. See how our tire pressures look. I tried for 40 and we got 39, 38, 39, and 38. Okay, so our right rear right now is at 38. So I'll hop back there. I'll leave, leave some pressure out of it. Oh, sorry, the IPA is making me belch a little bit. Sorry, belchy belchy. Um, I'll go back there, leave a little bit out of it at 38, and uh, we'll make sure that's the one that drops, and then we should be good. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but the right rear dropped to 31. So I would say we pretty much have a confirmed um, TPMS relearn done. Um, i got to shut this off. And through this, I found out that apparently the Altel MoxiDOS doesn't do anything with the tire pressure monitor censoring on these volts. So that's the way it is. And uh, as I said before, most of the GMs do this. You can do this with inflating the tires and then deflating them. I know a lot of the other cars, GMs, do it differently. The Colorados, what you had to do was turn the headlight switch like four times quickly with the brake on and uh, do that, the emergency brake on. But the thing was, with those, you were relearning them, but it really didn't tell you. It just told you you had a low tire, so there was really no sense in it. It didn't point out which tire it was. The one step I did forget in this, but it didn't seem to make a difference, is it tells you to set the parking brake. I did not set the parking brake. As we see, it didn't seem to make a difference because it took it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back, fill up my right rear tire, back up to the appropriate pressure, and that's the other thing. If you take air out of these, make sure you put pressure back and put air back in them to get the pressure to the correct amount. You don't want to go away and after you did this and have 20 pounds in one of the tires. You'll probably notice it relatively quickly, but... Anyhow, so I'm going to go do that, fill these up, and then um, I think we have these relearned. -ed. So there you have it, folks. How to relearn the TPMS on a GM vehicle with no special tools. Uh, like I said, did I need that TS-401? Nope. But you know what? You can never have enough tools even if you don't want to use them. And with saying that, just remember, if you can get somebody else to do it, you're probably better off. Till next time.